Second Life is a virtual world in which participants can alter their appearances and interact with people all over the globe. In this world, you may dress however you'd like, act however you'd like, and be whoever you'd like. Although this place may seem like a fun experience, it can become a place of obsession and addiction. Some people become so immersed in their second life that they forget about their first life. This documentary displays one man's experience in second life, how the platform grew so quickly, how he dealt with cyberbullying, and how his time in it essentially destroyed his real life. Meet Crispy Bacon. So you have been a part of Second Life for how long now? I've been I've been a resident of Second Life for nine and a half years. Wow! And you heard about it through the New York Times. That's pretty awesome. Yes. Uh, Second Times, uh, Second Life, has been featured in multiple international magazines, news magazines, uh, just so many variety of uh, places. It's been on CSI, uh, Crime Scene, you know, that TV show. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's been on the BBC. Uh, They actually did a newscast out of Second Life. Uh, there was actually a simulcast at a Harvard Law School. Uh, when I first joined, they actually did a uh, presentation at Harvard where they did an overhead projector where the screen from like what you're looking at right now, right? Uh, they actually projected that in a wall or a big, uh, big screen and then that took a projector not a projector, I'm sorry, a camera, a video camera, and faced it toward the audience. And so we could see the audience watching us, and they could see us watching them. And we could hear them, and they could hear us. Wow, that is very interesting. How do you think Second Life has evolved? Are a lot more people getting involved is it a big changeover? Like a lot of people will come into it and then leave, or do you think they stay? A lot of people come and then go right away because Second Life is not what they expect it to be. It's also difficult to get started, and it's a little bit expensive to develop your, your look as well as if you want to, say, own land for any length of time or an, a great deal of land is it's not cheap. And so uh, many people come and go, oh, there's no specific goal. Uh, I don't get it. I'm leaving. They want to see a first-person shooter, bang them, shoot them up kind of game. They want a racing game. They want something that already has rules and a process and a goal. And Second Life has none of that, not directly. Okay, yeah, um, we talked a lot about that in class, about how this isn't a game because there is no end result that you have to get to to basically finish it. So that's very interesting. Charlie has a question now that she'll ask you. Hi, Crispy Bacon. The question I would like to ask is, how do you differentiate your second life from your real life? Or is there any differentiation? Ah, that's a very good question. The answer is... When I first joined, I was one of those people who uh, let go of reality and became my second life persona, my character, my my being. Uh, after several years and lots of other experience and hearing from other people who like said, I don't get it, this is just a chat room. And I kept saying to them, and many others say, no, it's not, it's not, you don't get it. I started to understand how for them, it's just a chat room. And that broke down my ability to as easily go into that pretend environment again, if that makes sense. Right, yeah, that does make sense. So I do a little bit of both. But more and more, I just look at it as a chat room, although I used to look at it as a very a very personal, very deeply engaging environment if you wanted it to be. Right. Like a lot of people I know build relationships through friendship, through companionship, 
whatnot um, through here because they can kind of represent themselves as how they want to be compared to who they really are in real life. Um, which is sometimes a scary thing because, you know, people can act a different way through these virtual worlds than they really are in real life. Yes, exactly. I actually have learned quite a bit about who I am. And Second Life does give people a great variety or an option to uh, express parts of themselves that they've never uh, felt comfortable in the real world uh, allowing others to see or for them to even feel. For example, when I first started, I met a guy who was uh, what they call a furry, a tiger, and he was all very, he was always very snappily dressed. You know, he was very sharp and uh, very classy looking. You know, tuxedos and things. He was just fun to be around. He was just very jolly and very happy. I envied that. I wanted to be that kind of happy-go-lucky guy. And I kind of envied being a furry, but back then especially, I got a furry look, and all I heard was negative comments like, yiff in hell, fur fag, and, and uh, comments like that. And it was very hurtful to me, because I am gay. And, and I'm like, you don't even know me. How do you know that I'm even gay or whatever? And, and you're just making these hurtful, ugly, hateful comments. And I'm just here to be, you know, to be fun. And, and you're just being ugly. I bought myself a elephant, which I didn't really have very much money at the time. Uh, I was out of work and I bought an elephant because it had been uh, written up as very high quality. It was the winner of several prizes. Mm -hmm. And I went to get the elephant and I tried it on and it didn't look that good. And I actually cried in real life. I felt so sad that I spent my money on this thing and it didn't look, uh, and it didn't allow me to present myself in a way that, I, I, that it made me happy. So yeah, I, I took it very personally that, that that elephant was me, that, that I couldn't present myself in a way that gave me happiness, you know. So yeah, it was very personal. Right. Wow, that is very touching. Thank you for sharing that with us. But I totally understand that. Uh... So basically what you are experiencing in this virtual world happens a lot in real life. And this virtual world kind of, you know, people want it to be a safety place where they don't have to experience maybe the things they do in real life in their second life. Yes, exactly. But what happens, unfortunately, is there are bullies, there are what we call trolls and griefers, and they're hateful, and the internet gives them anonymity, and they become even worse and more vile and more, more troublemakers uh, and bullies than they even were in real life, if that's possible. And, and they bring that to, to Second Life, and they, they uh, go out of their way to make other people's lives miserable, uh, somewhat mildly miserable to really, really, truly miserable. Yeah, and I feel like even maybe people who aren't the ones that are bullying in real life might be overturning that in Second Life and bullying others because of being bullied maybe in their real life. That could possibly happen. <laughs> So as you said earlier, how this used to be more of a personal place for you, but now over the years it's becoming more of a chat room due to your past personal connection. Do you feel that you enjoyed it more when it was so personal to you or now that it's more of just the chat room? That's a damn good question. The <laughs> answer is I can't compare the two. It's apples and oranges. I enjoyed it tremendously when it was that exploration of self from a almost third party view. Our microphones cut off for a portion of Chris's testimony. We were wishing him well and thanked him for his time and finally hoped that we would see him in the future. However, he followed by answering that this was his last day in Second Life. He continued to tell us that he had lost his home, lost his money, lost his real-life relationships, and have been moved to a temporary housing place. This is where the microphone picked back up. Uh, for quite a while, I have no internet connection for a while, so I won't be here to ask. 
Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, that must probably become a problem for a lot of people that, you know, become addicted to this virtual world. Their second life kind of starts to deteriorate because they're in another place. It, it actually it does. There are quite a few people who are actually quite addicted to second life. They, they get late for work. Uh, it ruins marriages and partnerships and friendships. Uh, people stop seeing each other in real life. It, it actually does. That is a really scary thing. <laughs> Include that in your report because it has happened. Yes, I will. That is a great idea. After these moving words, we decided to see if our friend had been a reliable source. Many Second Life users had admitted to knowing Chris P. and stated that he was not one to lie. The man had helped many newcomers and valued Second Life. As explained in Chris's final words, Second Life is a dangerous place. This world can create a dangerous obsession that takes one away from real life and can lead to a downward spiral. If entering Second Life, proceed with caution.